Well, to really explain why Tara and I are doing the Seeds of Loving Kindness tour, I think I actually have to go back to my childhood. In my early childhood, I actually grew up with the wealthiest people in the entire world. They were the top 1% of the top 1%. Many of the families that I grew up with in Shaker Heights, Ohio, their ancestors signed the Declaration of Independence. Their uncles, grandfathers were senators, congressmen, governors of states, and the leaders of industry for the whole United States. And very early in my life, I learned that uh, money did not make you happy. When I was in high school, I saw many of my friends becoming alcoholics, and I looked around and I saw husbands cheating on wives, mothers addicted to Valium, the plethora of problems facing society. And I came to the conclusion that all that money didn't necessarily make you happy. Now, I'm not against money. Money can be very useful and uh, not all wealthy people are unhappy. But at an early age, I came to the conclusion that just having money did not make you happy. And I was beginning to really question, pondered this. Uh, how could people really be happy? And that led me in a search. I was raised Christian. And I took literally uh, what Jesus said when he said the kingdom of heaven is within you. First attain ye the kingdom of heaven, and then all else shall be added unto you. And so I began searching, and I turned to the Far East, and I started studying Taoism, Buddhism, Hinduism, because it seemed to me that they actually had um, teachings, wisdom, about how to attain the kingdom of heaven. I read books like the Bhagavad Gita, the Tao Te Ching, The Way of Life by Lao Tzu, Autobiography of a Yogi. And I learned that there actually was a state of consciousness that human beings could attain called enlightenment, a distinct state of consciousness where one was eternally happy, blissful. One experienced one's true nature, infinite, eternal bliss consciousness. And I set out to experience that. When I was in college, I began meditating. I practiced transcendental meditation. And I decided very early on that I wanted to become a teacher of meditation. I started a meditation center on the North Shore of Long Island, outside of New York City. And I taught meditation full time for 10 years. And then I had a succession of other teachers. A very important, pivotal moment in my life was when Tara and I were very close to a Tibetan Buddhist teacher. In fact, we actually were his attendants. We helped him start his organization in America. And we set up all of his Dharma teaching events on the west coast of the United States. We traveled with him for three years. And at one point, I took the Bodhisattva vow with him. The Bodhisattva vow means that you pledge, you make a commitment to devote yourself to the welfare of others. And when I took the Bodhisattva vow, I took it very seriously. I decided that I was going to spend the rest of my life serving humanity and helping all sentient beings attain enlightenment. When I turned 50, I really pondered my life and I came to the conclusion I might not be alive that much longer. Uh, who knows, when you reach 50, you realize I could be alive another 20 years, maybe 30 if I'm lucky, but also it could be another 10 years. And I really pondered my life and I thought, you know, when I check out, I'm not going to be able to take the money in my bank account, my home, my car, my beautiful wife, 
there's only one thing that I'm really going to take with me, and that is my karma. And that karma will determine my next life. And so I turned to Tara, my wife, and I said, Tara, what do you think if we never work for money again? What if we only do voluntary spiritual work for the rest of our life? And fortunately, Tara said, that's exactly what I want to do. So that was 15 years ago. I'm 65 now, and for the past 15 years, Tara and I have not had a job. We work very hard, maybe harder than we ever did at a job, but we don't work for money. We work voluntarily to do spiritual work. So we moved to India in 2006, and we've lived there for seven years. And we specifically decided to study, to research, the lives of great Siddha saints. Now, the word Siddha means a perfected one, or one who has attained the perfection of consciousness. And the reason that we decided to do that is that Tara and I believe passionately that the problems that the world is facing are not going to be solved unless humanity rises to a higher level of consciousness. I think we all can agree that the world is facing serious problems. Global warming, shortages of food, clean water, the glaciers in the Himalayas are melting, hatred, violence, terrorism. The solution is to raise the consciousness of humanity. As long as people are experiencing low states of consciousness, these problems will continue. So Tara and I have devoted our entire adult lives, basically, to working to raise the consciousness of humanity. And after living in India for four years, researching the lives of great Siddha saints, we decided to bring that knowledge out and share it with our friends around the world. Now one very important point is, if you're going to raise the level of consciousness, how do you do that? It's a good question. Well, when you want to do anything in life, no matter what it is, it could be brain surgery, it could be car mechanics, computer technology, you go to someone who's an expert. And the Siddhas are the experts of consciousness. So Tara and I decided to spend the rest of our life educating people around the world about the great Siddha saints. We don't promote any one religion. We don't promote any one teacher or any one spiritual path. All we do is tell stories about beautiful, enlightened Siddha saints. And our only intention is to inspire people to grow spiritually. We trust that they will then find the path that works for them. So this is what we've been doing for the past four years. Many people think when they hear that we travel around the world, they assume, oh, they must have a lot of money to be able to do that. <laughs> the reality is we have practically no money at all. In 2010, when we did our first tour, of the United States, we got off the plane in San Francisco with $90 to our name, and we didn't even have a car. And our friends said, how can you dream that you're going to travel all the way around the United States giving a free presentation, and you don't have any money, and you don't have a car? And we said, we're not worried about it at all. We have total trust that it's going to happen, because our trust is in God. If God wants this to happen, it will happen. And beautifully, people loaned us cars, trucks. We drove over 30,000 miles around America. We gave over 150 free presentations to over 3,000 people. And many of those people said that the presentation changed their life. So that's why we do what we do. And then the next year we did it again. That year we again, for some reason, got off the airplane with $90 to our name, also with no car. 
And this year we left India with $20 to our name with an even, even bigger dream that we would travel all the way around the world teaching for free because we don't believe in turning spirituality into a business. We left India with $20 and we got all the way to Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Beijing, Shanghai, Taiwan, Hawaii, and to Los Angeles. Now we're about to begin the American leg of the tour. And the most beautiful thing has happened that we're very excited about. We met Jampa Dorje, who just returned from two years in Nepal with a beautiful saint, Maha Sambodhi Dharma Sangha. We first heard about him many years ago when he was, at that point he had spent 10 months sitting under a tree in Nepal and the media started referring to him as the Buddha boy. We heard about him, he caught our attention, and we became curious to learn more about him. And then we followed the story over the six years that he sat under a tree. During the past six months, we decided that we wanted to go to, to Nepal to meet him. And fortunately, Jampa Dorje, who he has ordained as a monk, came to Los Angeles. And we met him and we became dear friends. And everything he has told us about his experiences in Nepal with Dharma Sangha has confirmed everything that we intuitively felt about him. We love his teaching. His teaching is simple, and yet it's very profound. His teaching is that what matters most is for every human being in the world to experience loving kindness in their heart. It's not a philosophy, it's not a dogma, it's nothing to argue or debate. It's simply the essence of all spirituality. It's the essence of what Jesus taught, what Buddha taught. It's the essence of every tradition we've ever studied. Open your heart and experience loving kindness. So we asked our dear friend, the monk, Jampa Dorje to accompany us on the American leg of our world tour. We're very excited about this. The teachings that he's giving, the experiences that he's telling about are so profound and so inspiring that we want to share it with as many people as we can. And so next week we set off from Los Angeles to travel the United States planting the seeds of loving kindness. We hope to see you along the way.